can't afford the services, so we got to do it ourselves. Hello, my name is Shea Bird Mother, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. And in today's video, I'm showing you how I make my homemade sugar wax. Start off by putting hot water into the container that will be storing your sugar wax. This is so you can avoid the possibility of your container breaking from coming in contact with hot wax. Sugar wax uses a two for one ratio, meaning for every two parts sugar, you're going to be needing one part liquid. And your liquid is made up of half water and half lemon juice. So in the current batch I'm making, I'm using two cups of white sugar, half a cup of water, and half a cup of lemon juice, making my liquids total up to one cup. I'm using lemon juice concentrate because that's what's on hand, but you can use fresh lemon juice. I use white sugar because I find it easier to spot the color change, which is an indication that the wax is close to being done, versus brown sugar. I find that brown sugar is easier to burn because it's difficult to spot the color change, that comes from it being heated. I combine everything into one pot and set the stove to high and mix consistently until I see a color change. Now this is a part of the recipe that's different than most people online. Most people will tell you you should cook it on a medium high heat and stir consistently and I suggest you do that if you do not have experience of making wax or making hard candy. Since I've been making wax since I was literally 17 years old, I'm now 27, I have burned enough batches to know exactly when I need to turn down the stove or when I need to remove the pot from the heat. Now the trick to making sugar wax without using a candy thermometer, which is a word I struggle to say every time, is getting some cold water in a see-through bowl and placing a bit of the sugar wax into the bowl. You're going to test to see if the sugar wax is hard and ready to be used by pinching it in between your fingers underneath the submerged water. If the wax melts in between your fingers, that means the wax is not ready yet and you need to put it back onto the stove and try again after a minute. If you are able to mold the wax into a ball while it's submerged underneath cold water, that means your wax is ready to go and you need to take it off the heat ASAP. My sugar wax is now a rich, pretty amber color and it passed the cold water test, so I am ready to take it off the stove and transfer it into a container. I wanna lie to you and say that I wax consistently, but that would be a false statement. I've only been waxing about one week ahead of a carnival event. So that means last year I waxed once because I only went to one carnival, Toronto. And this year I am now on my third round of waxing. Yay. And that's because the first wax was back in April when I did a carnival photo shoot. The second wax was a week before Toronto carnival. And now because next week is Miami carnival and I cannot embarrass myself or my friends by having a mini bush peeking out my frontline body wear. I have to now go wax my spouse. And because I am unemployed and still struggling to find a job, I can't afford to go to my regular waxer, so I got to do it myself. But that's about me and back to the video. Once we are done, it is important that you transfer your hot wax into a heat-safe container. A lot of people I've seen online have been putting their wax into a plastic container, and you are at risk of that container breaking on you because of how hot the wax is it will shrink up the container and it can cause it to break when it comes to the waxing part i prefer to use wax strips the fabric i'm using is unbleached muslin cotton i got this from a fabric store here in toronto a couple years ago it was super cheap and i still have a whole bunch left over to use as wax strips and you can also reuse them by either washing them or soaking them in water me, personally, because I bought so much, I don't reuse them. I just simply throw it away after I'm done. How I make the wax strips is by folding over the fabric until I get the desired width. Then I cut slits at each corner so I could just pull the fabric through rather than having to cut it strip by strip. Now it's time to prep the skin. You're going to need a powder to absorb the oil and sweat off your skin, which will make the wax adhere more to your hair which decreases your likelihood of bruising. I'm using baby powder because of course, that's the only thing I have on hand. And after applying the powder, you see me put the wax on and shabang, pull, showing the camera that yes, indeed, my homemade wax does work. I ended up using this whole batch. I waxed both my arms, both my armpits, my happy chill, my cootie cat, including the inner lips. Yes, I did give myself a Brazilian and one leg. So I still have one furry leg to deal with. So I will be returning back to the stove to make another batch. And that's my video on how I make homemade sugar wax. I hope you were able to take away something new from this video. Thanks for giving me a watch. Remember to like, share, subscribe. 
please watch again if you got time because your girl needs the views. All right. Thank you. Have a great day.